So very good evening to all of you, my dear young people. We are certainly proud that you are with us and with the church this evening as we come for this uh, conference, which is of great importance to every one of us because at the end of the day, love matters. Happiness in life is not about how well you do in your studies. It is not what kind of work you are doing. All these things have their place, their importance. At the end of the day is, do we have meaningful, loving, healthy, faithful relationships? And so this evening, the scripture readings are very appropriate for us to reflect on the challenges that are affecting every one of us, not just you, your parents, and even us priests and religious. And the first reading taken from the letter of St. Paul to Corinthians describes to us the situation, the challenges are facing the early church. St. Paul was asked to resolve the conflicts within the community because the leaders themselves cannot agree. And there were people who were lobbying for different leaders and dividing the church. So right from the start, the church was already under internal threats. From without, the church was facing the external threats of the world. The city of Corinth, by the way, was a seaport and therefore also the center, the capital. And therefore, it was a flourishing city like Singapore. At, at the same time, a country like Singapore, because we are affluent, because we are a city, certainly there will be challenges when it comes to our lifestyle. There was prostitution, uh, there was uh, corruption, and people were living a worldly life, a life of immorality. And so, you know, my dear brothers and sisters, even as I speak of this, the truth is that we are living in very challenging times. In fact, the world that you lived in personally, I feel, is much more difficult than the world your parents and myself were in. In our times, society was homogeneous, which means to say, life was not so complex. Everything was very clear. The teachings of the church, what you have to do, they were all spelled out. Nobody challenged what the authority had taught us. Certainly, no one would ever think uh, of challenging their parents. Today, many of you young people are challenging or even confronting your parents over many issues. In those days during our time, we dare not even say anything even when we don't agree with our parents, we just accept, humbly submit in obedience. But the situation has changed. I think that is the reality. Today, many of you are brought out in this climate where there is so much information on the internet. From young already, you are exposed to information technology. And this is where I say your world is quite different from ours. Because of the amount of information you have received, it can be rather confusing. As I've said, in those days, things were black or white. Today, with so much opinions, with so much information, I think it's too bewildering for a young person to really try to understand what is truth and what 
is falsehood. Even among yourselves, I'm very sure, when you discuss moral issues, particularly the question of sex, of love, of marriage, even of your sexual identity, itself is divisive. We cannot even today agree on these fundamental issues. That is why I say it is a difficult world. In the world today, we know that people are redefining what is love, what is sex, what is marriage, what is a family, and who we are. If you think that your world is difficult, and that you are confused, and that you find yourselves unable to make decisions and paralyzed by this array of choices, I want to share with you, my dear young people, as a priest, and I'm sure my fellow priests could identify with me, and your parents particularly, we are also suffering the same challenges. And I tell you what is my difficulty as a priest. As a priest, being the servant of God, and as your parents, we are all called to uphold the truth. As taught to us by Jesus Christ in Scripture, in tradition. Truths are truths. It cannot be one day it is true, tomorrow it is false. If that is the case, then we never know what is truth. If that is the case, we can never therefore live our life with confidence. And so, this is where the dilemma is. Those of you who are parents, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. On one hand, we need to uphold values and the truth. On the other hand, there is the reality that our young people are struggling with their sexual identity, with their relationships, with their friends, where they are exposed right in their, tender, in their young age already to physical relationships, the pressure in schools today, peer pressure of having to find a partner, finding someone. Otherwise, people think, I mean, you've got no boyfriend, no girlfriend. I mean, you are that bad. Ah. Nobody loves you. Poor thing. Ah. Poor thing. Then you feel that you're out of place. You feel, therefore, you don't belong to the clique. All your good friends having a partner and you don't have to. So maybe something wrong is wrong with you. And so, you know, and this is where, for us, on one hand, we understand your struggles. Should we continue, therefore, to close our eyes to the truth and just let society and this trend prevail? Because that is the in thing. Do we follow what the world is doing? Because everyone is doing it. That's the problem. I think that's the question people, and that's what they're saying all the time. But Father, everyone is doing it. My friends are sleeping around. Pornography, everybody is watching. You tell me, don't watch. Is there anything wrong? If People are doing it. Why can't we do it? So it is therefore truth by consensus, truth by popularity. It is not truth in terms of objective truth, but whether everybody else is doing it. And so for those of us, parents, or us priests, if we were to uphold the truth, then people will say, Father, you are lacking compassion. You are out of touch with this world. You don't understand us. You are so harsh. You are so cruel. The church does not love us because the church excludes us. Because the church condemns us. 
And this is where I tell you the dilemma lies. Wanting to be faithful to the truth. Because, you know, my dear young people, you just have to ask yourself, love everybody needs. Who does not need love? Even I need love. We cannot exist without love. But what the church is seeking is authentic love, faithful love. But, you know, the world today, they're not so much interested in promoting love. What the world is interested in is promoting sex and pleasure. That's the whole problem. The whole problem is that today, love is reduced to physical love. Love is reduced basically to sexual love. But let me ask you a question. What is it that make you, makes you most happy in life? Is it physical love? That's only a small portion of it. What is it that makes you happy? When you find someone who is loving, who is caring, who is supportive, who is there when you need him, who listens to you, who supports you. It is the area of interpersonal relationship. It is the area of someone who cares for you and is truly self-sacrificing, putting you before himself or herself. That is what love is. And that is what makes love meaningful. That's why for us priests, we can have love without sex. But to have sex without love, that is to cheapen yourself. And that is to reduce the true meaning of love. At any rate, if your love is dependent just simply on physical love, you know very well that relationship cannot last. It cannot last. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, what are we called to do today? St. Paul today, again in the first reading, reminds us that we are called to be an apostle like him. And we are called to be holy. That is to say, we are called to be sent forth to be a witness of Christ's authentic love. Not just love, but true love. Nobody wants a fake love. Do you want people to love you with a fake love? You want fake love? No, I so don't want, I so don't want. Of course, if people, if your friend were to betray you, pretend to love you, but making use of you, cheating you, how would you feel? Hmm... <laughs> yeah, surely we want a love that is real, that is genuine. And so that is why today the scripture readings invite us that we must therefore be ready to live lives of, contra of contradiction. To be holy means to be set apart. To be holy means that we are courageous enough to be different from the rest of the world. That we are ready to stand up for what we believe. We are ready to stand up for the values that we hold. This is what it means to be a Christian. This is what it means to be a disciple, a follower of Jesus. And we do it. Not because we want to be different, but because we want to ensure that everyone is truly love. And that those kind of falsehood in love will not destroy them. Being courageous to stand up for what we believe, it is not easy, as I have said earlier. You know, I have many single women, they came to tell me, in the past, huh, in the past, it was considered a value to be chased. That's why even the church today, we honour virgins, those who live a chaste life. But today, if you are single, 
and someone asks you, have you slept before with someone? And you say no. They say, oh, poor thing again. Nobody wants to sleep with you. That means to say you must be really ugly or terrible. Can't even find someone to sleep around. Today, it is no longer considered, therefore, a virtue to be chased. In fact, to be chased is considered something that is not right. This is the attitude of the world. And this is where we need to stand our ground. We need to stand our ground. Precisely today in the gospel, we have John the Baptist. John the Baptist was the one who showed us, pointed to Jesus, behold the Lamb of God. Do you know that John the Baptist himself, he was a great preacher. He was very popular with his people. So much so, the people thought that he was the Messiah. And they say, are you the Messiah? And what he said, he never said, I am. He never said that. And if he said, I am, I can guarantee you, all the people will follow John the Baptist, not Jesus. John the Baptist had a great opportunity to make a name for himself, but he didn't because he was faithful to the truth. He knew Jesus was the Messiah. That's why he said he must increase, I must decrease. He did not seek popularity. That's what I want to say. He did not seek popularity. He stood up for the truth. For him, the truth must be respected. If Jesus were the Messiah, he just had to step aside. How many of us prefer popularity? We want to be accepted by our friends, by our peers. And so many of us, when it comes to values, we succumb to the crowd. We have a crowd mentality. Because everybody is doing it. So I join them. If you do that, you are not a leader. You are a sheep. And also a dumb sheep. Do you want to be dumb sheep? No. Don't be a dumb sheep. Be a good leader. Show the way. Like John the Baptist. Behold the Lamb of God. Point to Jesus. Point to Jesus. And how can you do this, my dear brothers and sisters? How can you do this unless you are well formed in your faith, in your values? Don't read only what the world is saying. That's the problem huh, with you all. You only read what the world is saying. Have you read what Jesus is saying? What the church is saying? You only read what the world is saying. That is why your mind is contaminated. You have a one-sided view of life. Ask yourself, what has Jesus got to say with respect to all these issues challenging your life? Ask Jesus. He's the way. He's the truth. He's the life. Ask Him. And that is why a conference like this, they are meant to enlighten you they are meant to conscientize you. They are meant to help you to discern where the truth lies and not to be deceived by the delusions of the world. But my dear friends, in the final analysis, let me tell you this. Knowing the teachings of the church, knowing the teachings of the gospel does not mean you will follow them. Knowledge is one thing. You won't. We all know what we should do and yet we don't. Remember, St. Paul speaks about the laws. We know that we should not do this, we should not do that, yet we still do it. Huh? Isn't it? Yeah. Or else you don't have to go for confession. Precisely. We do those things that we know we shouldn't do. So knowing is still not enough. You need a conviction. Conviction comes when you know Jesus as the Son of God. That's why John the Baptist, because he recognized Jesus as the Messiah when the Holy Spirit came down upon him, he was able to surrender. My dear brothers and sisters, 
Let me tell you too, for me as a priest, there are many things in this life that are really puzzling. There are many issues in this life that I have no answer. When people come to me with their problems, LGBT, their relationship problems, marriage problems, divorce issues, whatever it is, my heart goes out to them. And honestly, many times, I don't have a solution. And many times, I also know how much they are struggling. And they feel so alone and misunderstood. There are many things in this life that we don't understand. And yet, what do I do? I surrender. No, I don't have to understand all in order to surrender. The gospel never tells us, understand and believe. The gospel tells us, believe and you will understand. The whole gospel invites us to believe. So I place my faith in Jesus. Even there are many things I don't understand. I say, Jesus, you are the way, you are the truth, you are the life. I might not understand, but because you say so, I will do it. Because you say so, I will follow. So I invite you, my dear brothers and sisters, be like the psalmist today. Here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. I follow your precepts, O Lord. And so if you find it difficult, ask God for that grace. And that is why we must ask the Lord to renew the Holy Spirit in you, to renew your relationship with Jesus. The day when you are convicted that Jesus is your Lord and your Saviour, He will give you the strength to do what you have to do. And most of all, you must be apostles of love. In your school, among your friends, in society, in family. Amen.